It is that time of the morning in the part of the world where I live, where the early morning clouds are just starting to melt away. And in a matter of just a few minutes, the sun will shine brilliantly. I'm gonna bet that I can beat the sun to tell you what I wanna talk about today. And I'm hoping to do that because uh, there's lots of growth behind me. And I wanna talk about growth and the speed of growth and how God and why God makes growth happen the way that he does. But once the sun comes out, it'll be way too bright and I'll squint too much and it won't work. So I'll see if I get away with it. Um, our God is a God of new beginnings. Growth reminds us of that. So take deep breath. That's a gift of God. Let go of yesterday. Yesterday's gone. God will erase that. Embrace this day because this day is his gift. Lift up your hearts. Let's look for God everywhere including all of the living and growing things that God loves. And I want you to think today about the speed of growth. Where do you want to grow in your own life? And for these next few moments, I don't want you to be in a hurry. I want you to be fully present right here, right now, because this is the only place we find God. And it's only when we are rooted in the presence of God that growth in life happens. We're going through the book of Genesis, and on the third day, God has separated the water from the dry lands, but then it says this, and I want you to notice one word that keeps cropping up in particular. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation. What a great idea that was. Seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it. You can't see them, but there's a Stella cherry and the Craig's Crimson Cherry and the Bing Cherry, all kinds of trees that are staked right in front of me who are just getting ready to blossom. Seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. I want to talk about the lesson of the seed. I had a very formative teacher when I was in seminary, Ian Pitt Watson, who was a great preacher and a great teacher of preaching. And he said that there have been two revolutions that changed the human race. Only two, he said. He was from Scotland and he said the American Revolution was not one of them. The first one was when someone discovered the law of the seed, the power of the seed. And for human beings who had had to just hunt and gather, it became possible to live in one place, to put down roots, to build cities and culture and civilization. And this theme of seed, growth from a seed that God thought of, that God created is a fundamental one in scripture. There's a couple things to keep in mind about seeds. Seeds are real small. Jesus says in Mark chapter four, the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds, but when it's planted, it will grow up into the largest plant. My friend Sam says, and I love this, you know, you can count how many seeds are in an apple. You cannot count how many apples are in a seed. You never know with a human being what potential is in them. Another friend of Sam's and a mentor for Nance and me, Max Dupree, used to talk about the sin of unrealized potential. And God has placed uh, matchless the potential worth in every single human being. Everybody that you see has seeds of grace, seeds of greatness in them. And so do you. But the seed itself starts out real small. So the willingness to be small, to do small things is a part of how God has created things. And then another thing about seed is seeds are slow. And I want particular to notice this about creation. God decided that he would build creation through seeds, that he would have growth happen through seeds. Um, Tremper Longman, who is a Old Testament scholar, points out that God could have created everything in an instant, but he deliberately does not. And the best that we know right now, our universe is about 14.6 billion years old. Why? Because God is not in a hurry. And in the account in Genesis, God takes time on the first day to create, and then God knocks off. What does God do at night? It doesn't tell us. You watch TV? Um, 
Dallas Willard used to say about the Trinity when people would ask, what was the Trinity doing? What was God doing before creation? Dallas would say, he was enjoying themselves. Father, Son, and Spirit are never in a hurry because God loves now. And so part of what is happening in Genesis is that God is working, he's creating in such a way that he is showing us how to do life. And so God just moves slow. We just want to hurry, 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 hurry. Steve Wright talks about how this is so epidemic among us that we're always looking for ways to save more time. He said, once I put instant coffee in a microwave oven and almost went backwards in time. There's a very interesting article by Tish uh, Harrison Warren in the New York Times, wonderful Christian writer. And she writes about um, uh, how, do, how do we practice what she calls digital asceticism? That is, not, not to become addicted to the screens that rush us through life. And she asked some folks who are expert in this area, my growing concern is even the best types of screen use displaces the actual material that has created God's world around us. Minutes or hours on screen our minutes or hours, kids and adults are not talking to people around them, going on walks, learning an instrument, staring into space, or interacting with the material world. I've heard Jonathan Haidt uh, call screens experience blockers. Such a fascinating language. Putting a screen in your kid's hand prohibits them from experiencing the world, whether it's relationships, people God made, or enjoying creation, the creation God made, or whatever. Every time we choose convenience, there's a cost. Every time you push your toddler through Target and they start having a tantrum, it's so tempting to want to hand them a screen. And for sure, there are times you just gotta get them through Target. That's the gift of technology. Sometimes you can make that exchange. But every time you do that exchange, you have to consider there is a cost. By allowing them to go through the experience of having a meltdown and not getting what they want, you are actually building a muscle of delayed gratification, the law of the seed, in between the seed and the tree, the seed and the plant, the seed and the uh, fruit, there is time. You're actually building a muscle of delayed gratification of having these coping mechanisms that long-term are the things you want them to have as teenagers when they experience something that's hard or disappointing or embarrassing or they don't get what they want. We want them to have those skills as little ones to be able to draw from so that they can know they don't have to react quickly to something that's painful. A key example of this, particularly for parents of little ones, is a child's boredom. It can be excruciating to deal with as a parent, and it is so tempting to just pacify them. Boredom is the doorway to deep creativity. Boredom is the doorway to deep creativity, because then we wait. And God has built that into creation. That is the reason why he has put seeds. Seeds are slow. So today, let the slow work of God take place in you. And trust, seeds teach us trust. If you're always digging up the seed to see how's the root, it's not gonna do very well. Today, trust. And then, uh, seeds are small, seeds are slow, and seeds must die. That's the second great revolution that my friend Ian used to talk about, that Jesus, Name like nobody else has. Unless a seed, a grain of wheat, falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, if it goes into the ground, God made creation that way to teach us how it is that life works. When we die to ourselves and send out little roots and take in nourishment, nurture from great thoughts and acts of generosity and conversations with other people and noble words that we can read, That's when growth happens. So today, every time you see a plant, remember God and that God is good 
Remember the law of the seed. To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It's like a seed. A sower went to sow some seeds. Today, do not be in a hurry. Today, cultivate the growth that comes from the slow work of God. End of teaching. Beginning of your day with God. I can't even see what time it is. I hope the time's about right. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tim. I'm a part of the team here at Become New. If you'd like to receive the emails that go along with each video, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash subscribe. Or if you'd like to receive a text alert whenever we release a new video, you can text the word become to the number 855-888-0444. If you have a prayer request, please let us know. You can text that request to that same number, 855-888-0444. There's a group of us who meet every day to pray over those requests. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.